great scary movie, but it's great for the family. And you don't really see that. There's not many scary movies that kids can go see. I love being scared. On Halloween, um, we went to a haunted house, and it's just fun. I love that feeling of not knowing like what you're going to do. With this, it's mostly about the story and about the characters, and the scariness fits in perfectly with it, so that's not what's driving the film. Kids want real scares, good stories, good characters. There's an audience that's so hungry for material like this. It's very scary. It's not gross. It's not horrific. It's fun and it's scary. Cassie is very in tune with herself. She knows exactly what she wants, she knows exactly who she is, and no one's gonna tell her what to do. And I think she isn't bossy, but she knows how people work and she can figure people out pretty fast. Check out the tree. It was interesting because goth isn't what I am known for usually. I'm known for long blonde hair and that's how everyone knows me usually. When I saw her on set and she was like, hey, what's up? For the first couple seconds I was like, who is this person? Like, I don't... And then I was like, oh my gosh, wow. Like, I was like shocked. She looks totally different. Oh, Priscilla, <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, she's she's mean, but I think in a fun way. She's not just straight out mean in your face. She's really manipulative. Brittany Kern, who plays Priscilla, captures perfectly the mean girl of everyone's high school. Everybody has a mean girl. Didn't anyone tell you? The Halloween dance isn't until next Friday. <laughs> My character, he is uh, kind of like the coolest guy at school, but he's not really the smartest. Dude, you're not supposed to like it. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Oh, how you like it, huh? <laughs> he always wants to do the right thing. His heart's in the right place. Cody is uh, he, hes an excellent actor and a very, very popular guy with the teen girls. Still like Sean, pumpkin queen and pumpkin king. <laughs> Cassie finds the book in the stranger's shop and she is she loves scary stories and she's had a, probably a whole collection before and she sees this book and this book she's never read before and doesn't have an author and like she's really it, it, it entices her so she buys the book of course there's a warning plainly printed on the first page and she reads it aloud to her brother just to scare him and it comes alive and the creepy part is it may be just her imagination of what she created this monster to be. That's what's walking outside her windows trying to scare her. The character I play is Max Keller, and he is basically um, a scaredy cat six-year-old. Whenever something that's just the least bit scary, it gets in his head and he's, he's got, sort of like a what if -er. He keeps on thinking about it. Do you want me to read you this book, right? You're not mad anymore? Accidents happen. His sister, Cassie, reads him a story called The Evil Thing, and Max can't stop thinking about these sort of things, bringing the monster to life. The evil thing is not real, unless you think about it. In the story, they tell Max not to think about it, which is something that Max just can't do. The main thing about this movie, it tells you this horrible, like, scary story, and then it's like, but don't think about it. And, and of course you're gonna think about it. That evil thing, it's real. The whole deal, it's got your brother. Oh my gosh, I had no idea it would be this frightening. I love walking into the sets for the first time. It's like everything you've been building up to finally comes to life. The evil thing is this big monster. I think it's like six feet tall. It looks really, really real. It has like all these nasty teeth and and it has two heads, too, to add to everything. And split. And one head snaps at one kid, and one head snaps at the other kid. So it's like always keeping the audience on their toes. They got slime all over it, and it's just, just nasty, and it's scary. <laughs> this thing is good. Like, we're gonna truly be frightened. I, I'm scared, like, it works when we're doing scenes, because we go in, and 
the monster is there and it, it does frighten me. When I first saw it, and when I still see it today, I'm just thinking in my head, how cool is this thing? Oh my gosh, it's just it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. This is um, the monster's lair. The tunnel and everything in the lair is really cool and um, much more claustrophobic looking than I thought it would be. I think that the lair seems to be fun to film as long as the inside isn't gooey. Because I don't want to get gooey and icky. Ah! Ah! In the movie, there are a variety of pranks. I really wish I could pull some of these things off. They're very sophisticated. I'm the Pumpkin Queen. I will conquer the world. I think it's going to be the greatest night of my life. I go up on stage, I do the annual hitting of the pumpkin pinata, expecting candy to fall upon my head. And what comes out is 600 live cockroaches. Mm. They're kind of crunchy, but they taste pretty good. Want some? Yes! So we did the take, I freaked out in the take, and then it finished. And that's when I really freaked out. <laughs> And I still feel like they're on me, and I'm gonna go home and take five showers. So after all those fall down upon me, I lose my balance, and then I fall off the stage and hit face first into the huge orange pumpkin cake. And oh my god, it was like the frosting was just stuck in my nose several days after, and it was just disgusting. <laughs> The whole part where we're defeating the monster is my favorite scene. It's us three kids, and we're all working together to kill this monster, to save the day. Max! <gasps> oh. You did it, Max! Way to go, little dude! Yes! It wasn't so hard. I've always loved horror and science fiction and the opportunity to expand and do a film like The Haunting Hour. I jumped at the opportunity. He has things keep on rolling and grab you from the very start. I think that's a great thing to do. I think that's what helps communicate to not just actors, but kid actors. And he really cares. I think it's nice to have that sort of safety net. He looks at you and he understands how you feel and he takes that into account. And he really does care about what you think. Children have incredible imaginations, and they actually appreciate that aspect of storytelling more than anybody else. I dare say in success, kids will be saying on the playground, don't think about it. Remember, don't think about it.